three. We're live. And we're back with all things 3D. We're up in our mobile studio here at Real 2015. Today is February 26, 2015. And we have a special guest in our little mobile studio, Tatiana. Yes. And uh, she's from Autodesk. And uh, what do you do at Autodesk, Tatiana? Oh my God, what do I not do? Um, so the history of uh, being in Autodesk for me is um, I'm there for about 14 years. Um, I was an architect in previous life, but I realized that I studied architecture to be creative and then I ended up being a cat drafter for other people, which was not very exciting. And plus I realized there are more talented architects than me. So I, um, by chance and mistake, started working for Autodesk because they were looking for somebody who speaks a couple of languages and knows architecture and I speak eight languages and I knew the products that they wanted. So out of joke, I started working in the London office in product support from all places where I learned a lot about being compassionate and empathic to our customers and the post remorse process when you buy something and uh, a product and then you're maybe having troubles with it and um, you need a holding hand. And I really think that um, my career would have looked differently and my attitude towards customers if I didn't work that first year in support. And I always say everybody who works in this business should spend a year in support because then you have the, the reality behind. Great, we make these tools, we know nothing is perfect, but uh, if the customers, the users are not helped at the beginning with a holding hand, it's very hard. How does it affect them? You know, I mean, that, yeah, I mean, that gives you a unique Yeah, you, you, you know, the point is that we make this for them and, uh, uh, you know, product managers, which I have been majority of the career in Autodesk, um, do try to understand the customer need and then make something. But very often we cannot know exactly how in day to day life something is implemented. So it's very important to um, to have learned that uh, through support. So the first one and a half year I was in support in London and then um, um, through a series of circumstances and writing a report that somebody didn't expect that I would write so descriptively and so richly, I ended up uh, being moved to the business execution for EMEA because um, um, they saw how my brain works. So I moved to Paris and I was basically uh, the technical manager for architectural products for Europe, Middle East and Africa. And at that time we purchased Revit and um, I lost my heart and soul for our BIM for, for Revit because I was an architect and said, damn it, if I was having this tool, I would have not stopped architecture. And I started crusading uh, Europe, Middle East and Africa, teaching Revit, evangelizing Revit. And at some point I said, okay, now I want to really impact the product. I don't just want to talk about it. Yeah. So then I became product manager. Of so product. what's Revit? Oh, Revit, sorry, yeah. yeah. Revit is our building information modeling smart solution for architects. So until Revit, usually um, architects were using either AutoCAD and 2D drafting solutions. And there were some, um, and, and then we had architectural desktop, which was two and a half D kind of uh, better way for architects to work. Um, and at that time there was the first versions of ArchiCAD on the market and stuff. And, um, Revit was the first parametric solution, but it was not just about 3D and parametric. It was about the fact that until Revit, you needed to describe a project through series of 2D drawings in order to describe the 3D. And with Revit, it was the opposite. You were building a 3D model full with information and then the documentation, the drawings, that was all the automatically. automatically generated. It was complete uh, uh, mindset uh, change. But what was also important was that um, you know, there were professions created like CAD drafters before that. Anybody who didn't know anything about architecture could work in an architectural office and, and draft drawings. <laughs> well, Revit was requiring that you are an architect, that you understand what you're doing because it was like building a building only if only you're building it in 3D environment. Right. So yeah, that was um, the further step in the career. So I moved to Boston to become the product manager of Revit and guide the team. And those were the crucial years for establishing BIM. Uh, that we introduced as a category, as approach to working, building information modeling. It was about the information, not about the 3D modeling. And once that was, um, uh, that became mainstream, 
Uh, then I moved to California, and after a couple of um, different positions, um, I uh, started with two other people, the consumer group in um, in Autodesk. After 20-something years of Autodesk serving only high-end professionals, uh, we decided that the time is ripe with all of these um, iPads and access to technology to offer the smart solutions that we have in a simpler, easier way and free for kids and consumers who might never become professionals, but um, for the kids, they might get interested to become designers, engineers, yeah. etc. But for others, there are many creative people out there who just don't have creative professions and we wanted to empower them. And that was almost coincidental with the start of the maker movement. So it was really interesting times. It was too interesting, you know, as there was a lot of pushback by many colleagues who called us crazy, say, why are, why are we doing this when we have real customers yeah, with money and stuff? To monetize it, so right? it was very hard sell and I was crying in meetings. I was not understanding why people don't get me. And um, it was so exciting to see how it developed. And um, the code name that I actually coined, 123D, um, turned out to, to be stay to be name. the product name. <laughs> and I have to tell the story behind it because many people don't know. The 1, 2, 3, D, uh, in my mind, as kids, we express our creativity with sketching, which is 1D, and then paper crafting, which is 2D, and Lego and clay modeling, which is 3D. So 1, 2, 3, D. But it was also an initi initiation, 1, 2, 3, D. So oh, it was yeah. almost like a, no, come so on, we, let's we get have never, We've interviewed several people from Autocad, and this is Autocad, Autodesk, and this is the first time we've it's heard right. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, because now that uh, group uh, is so big, and we made Pier 9 and products and stuff, but none of them was here at the beginning, and <laughs> very few people know about where the name came from. Oh, so, oh, yeah. Well, we now know. There. Yeah, yeah. and that was the most exciting times and the moment the consumer group got established, I was there when we decided to buy the Instructables and um, I was product manager of 1 3 d Make uh, because um, we were very excited about the fact that laser cutters can, while well, cutting um, cardboard or wood or acrylic, allow you to make really complex objects. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So basically those two positions were product management position where you actually either have an idea about the product try to sell it internally and then you make it or we already know about um, a problem and you want to solve it i was always more interested not to solve existing problems because the one of the fundamental questions always in autodesk is what problem are you solving i was always more interested to uh to the question what can we create desire for so instead of solving just a problem to create an opportunity for for people to do new things right. with technology Innovative. exactly so the last um uh job that i have is again uh, product management but and i will talk about the last product more later but in parallel to all of those uh, different positions and there were some other things in between um uh, of product manager i was also always somebody who was speaking for the entire product um, portfolio of Autodesk on many big, small conferences. And um, I work a lot with animals. I actually go next week, two months in Africa again. I work with lions and stuff wow. as a volunteer yeah, every year to, to keep sane. And um, uh, our, my VP, he's calling me the lion tamer. But um, I realized that there is something about me that I have ability to teach people technology in a way that is very easy for them to understand it. And out of joking about horse whisper and stuff, when I had to present at TED, I said, how will I tell at TED what, what am I doing? Product manager, nobody knows what that is. So out of a joke, I wrote um, technology whisper and that <laughs> remains. So now I'm officially technology whisperer and a self-invented name, copyrighted, nobody can use that. Um, he calls me the print whisperer. Oh, you see, you yeah, see, yeah. Me, I had the, yeah. Yeah, but so basically, we, on a serious note, um, product manager always driving products and um, technology whisperer meetings um, always talk about um, what are we trying to do, uh, having always a good overview of what's all happening in the company and trying to uh, connect the pieces and come to something new. And um, uh, usually always inspired of how technology develops and trying to look to new opportunities how can this help now some uh, new things to happen? So that's why usually I, I'm on the forefront of some new things that are often very uncomfortable 
for established practices and for other people. But then um, the first year I'm always not understood and I'm crying on meetings and stuff. And then <laughs> year later, everybody, you have the coolest job. And that's <laughs> happening in a cycle every three years. So I said, do you remember last year when you said I'm crazy? <laughs> and now you're telling me you have the coolest job and say, so how easy is it to, to forget? The innovators are hard to understand a lot of times. So, you know, visionaries. You know, yeah. I'm not sure if I'm an innovator. I just think that we live in enormous, interesting technological times. And if you just think a little bit out of the box, you will realize that, hey, maybe we made this technology for engineers, but all of a sudden an archaeologist or a scientist can use it. So why not try to make a solution for them for that? Sure. And I always say it's worth it trying. You might fail with something new, but you will never know if you didn't try. And um, somehow I have had um, people from the upper parts of Autodesk that believed uh, in me and let me sometimes go with a team to, to try new things. And at this conference, I announced um, a new product that we are just launching in beta that is exactly of that kind, something that we have never done before. And that is tightly related with the fact that um, sensors have become ubiquitous and hardware devices that can help us digitize the analog world around us are now, instead of being a half a million or a quarter million dollar device like the lasers were only a couple of years ago, now there are hundreds and hundreds of types of devices uh, starting, from, yeah, starting from smartphones that have phenomenal quality cameras to connect devices and tangos and structured light handheld scanners and uh, more affordable laser scanners. So all of a sudden, the analog world around us can be digitized easily. And then looking at that trend and then looking at the trend of um, uh, accessible fabbing, um, everything around the new industrial revolution and the fact that there are computer numerically controlled machines that today do not require you to, to know how to use the machine. They don't require a shop floor. You can buy a 3D printer or a laser cutter and put it in your garage. Mm -hmm. um, that accessible fab being connected with the uh, sensors and, uh, and also a part of the 3D web, the fact that the web enables now interactive experiences. We were looking at those three trends and we said there is something here. There is something here that can make professions that we never dealt with, that we don't know much about, like um, archaeologists, scientists, museum curators, uh, artists, sculptors, um, medical experts, to leverage this to push their professions to the limit. So we decided to make Memento uh, to create high definition 3D assets from any input, any reality input. At the moment, we support photogrammetry, so photo to 3D mesh. Laser scans are already working to mesh, but we are not yet exposing it, so it comes in probably month time. And handheld scanners, the first one that we implemented in Memento is Artec. And we create 3D digital assets that we then create unbelievably smart, but very, very easy to use tools because our targets were people who want high quality results and yet are not CAD geeks. They've never been trained in technology. They're not kids, they're not amateurs. They are experts. There's Dr. Louis Leakey, three generations of fossil hunters in Kenya. There is Wiley, who is a, a coral uh, marine scientist. Um, then there is the Smithsonian's. There are Cosmo. So Cosmo Venman, who loves art and uh, right. is enabled. His, his models have been, I mean, I've printed dozens of his models. So you know, he's also sharing them with the world, which right. is so beautiful. Right. But the, you know, he started with one to 3D catch actually. Right. And then he graduated the Memento because he wanted better results. Yeah. He wanted the model to be more precise. Oh, it's, it's and really, um, really. Uh, this was for us really interesting to how to tackle the problem of making a really smart solution, but making it so easy that people who are not trained in CAD can use it. And I'm proud to say that Memento, we build only one thing that is new in Memento, which is a complete new engine that can stream two billion plus uh, poly, uh, two plus billion polygonal meshes because meshes generated from reality sensors are much, much bigger than meshes uh, generated by modeling. So what happens is that you create these beautiful meshes, but nobody can open them. Nobody right. can read them because it, they're computers. Exactly. Not big so that is the only thing that we built from scratch. The rest, I can proudly say there is nothing new in Memento. What's new is that we made it bloody easy. And what's new is that a process that would have taken somebody like Louis Leakey 
to use five, six different software. Software that was made, that were made for engineers, for quality assurers. Like, what, what does she have to do with any of that? Um, we put it all in one product with the dedicated tool set that anybody can learn in 15, 20 minutes. And the UI is beautiful. Yes, and yeah. the point is, Smithsonian, they have 137 million objects. How do you ever digitize that if you have to train people on five, six different software that you have to buy um, and you, you even don't even know how to combine all of those assets and which file format and then go there and there. Well, in the, in the, in the CAD, the software, the person, the computer geek or the guru like us, yeah. we're not the entomologist, right? So we don't know how to handle. So that's a whole other separate set of training. But if you can train an entomologist or the archaeologist exactly. to use the because tool, today, not have to be a geek. Yeah. Today, many of cool. them are seeing opportunities with this, but and they're trying, but they're hiring experts to do it for them. They're hiring media entertainment studios to do it. They cannot afford it. They're, they're just testing with them to see if it's val valuable, uh, valid. So it was really exciting to target professionals who want high quality results, but have very low technological expertise because that made us think of every single feature that we put in of the usability of it. And we promised we will not put one single button that is not in, important for those workflows. Because it's so easy when you're a technologist to say, hey, why don't we add that in the right. software? Because it's cool, right. because we know how to do it. Right. That is how you make this Swiss Army knife software that has thousands of options and buttons. And it doesn't matter if it's smart and what it can do if it makes you feel stupid. Exactly. So for me, technology and the future of technology is not about inventing many new things. There are some interesting inventions that are generative design and stuff, but it's about making it easy. So it's not about what, it's about how, because right. every software, Autodesk or competitive software can pretty much do the same things. It's about the how you do it. That's amazing. Yeah, let me interject in here for a moment. Um, yeah. Tatiana, I, I know that you have it on your laptop, but I would like our audience to see it. I have it on mine as well, because I played with it last night. So what I'm thinking is that I have a streaming broadcast system which will actually project what I'm showing. So what I was thinking is that we would come around to this side of the table and we'll still have the cameras. You'll see when you're here. Uh, but that way you can actually use my software and give our yeah, audience I, a demo. Uh, is that possible? Yeah, All, everything is possible. The thing is that I have lots of models on my machines that I could open. Uh, that would probably make sense. I don't know if it is quick or if we can make a break so that I can join with my machine on the... Well, it, you can't get into my streaming system with yours. We're on two different... I see. Levels. Because but, I don't know what models you have. Uh, um, so it's very difficult to, if you don't have photos... Is there anything that sure. we can download? Uh, how much time do we have? Uh, well, let's... Uh, <laughs> well, there's a couple of ways we can do it. We can pull off my camera and you can hold it and show her screen. Will that work? Yeah, that'll work. Let's try it. And then that way you can actually give a demo and our audience can actually see yeah. it work for the but very first time. But for the time. audience, if you want, there are webcasts, webinars that I've made. Oh, awesome. That so you can just send the link because it's much better quality. And make sure that I get all quality. the links for that. Yes. And then, uh, it is a much better quality uh, to do that. Well, and if, if we would be able is, to do it on mine, we could have actually. And so this is uh, still cloud-based software, right? So, oh, so good question. Actually, it's not fully cloud-based software. It is a desktop software that requires a download and installer, but reaches to the cloud um, invisibly to the user for the hardcore processing stuff. So, for example, you can use Memento without internet as long as you're just editing stuff. But if you want to create photo to mesh, uh, um, 3D mesh from photos and stuff, you have to be connected to the internet. Right, because all the super, because when you're when you're crunching this many polygons, yeah, we're you need to have a... Yeah, we'll have to get really close so that, um, there you go, and then move it up a little bit. Yeah, so sorry about this. We, I was not prepared. So no, it's it's, it's fine. No, this is great. Yeah, and you've got some flicker in there. Um, it's not going to turn out very well. I've got a few models here. Maybe you can just play with as well. Yeah, because it's really interesting to show you. I loaded it with stuff that we yeah. just did so many. Yeah, and, you know, uh, and, and also she's got webinars online. Um, she can, uh, and, and so where can we find these webinars? Yeah, I will send a link, but basically the new Memento website is called memento.autodesk.com. 
don't just type out Cemento because it links to the lip stuff because this one is new and it's not going I, I found that yesterday. Yeah. But today it's up. Yes. And so, um, so if you go there, you will, you will find the forum button. And if you click there, the webinars are listed in the first two pages. And we will be making one webinar a month because we want to also make webinars just for science, just for artists, just for... Um, but the webinars are very good. I have to say one thing. What is very, very important is when it comes, for example, from for photo to mesh, which many people are interested in because they can make photos, right? It is um, crucially important that you know how to take the photos. It's not always about having the best camera. Of course, if you have a better camera, the level of detail will be better. But what's really, really important is to learn that the photos have to be taken in a way that there are no shadows, they cannot be blurry, no depth of field, sexy photography, because we need everything sharp, the background and the foreground. F22. Yeah, so mm -hmm. then maybe not 22, but uh, <laughs> um, then... F16 or Yes, above. and then when you do that, if you're using a manual camera, then obviously exposure time has to be long. That means that if it... Uh, or lots shakes, of light. So, yeah, so tripod clicker if you don't use an automatic camera then absolutely strong recommend tripod clicker and stuff but webinar number three talks a one hour just about how really? to take the photos if you try and it fails it's not the software it's not the algorithms it's just the photos you have to have good overlap photos without shadow absolutely no use of flash nothing blurry on the photos no motion don't change the scene while you're shooting around the object. Right. Shoot every five degrees. I explained it very well. And a general note for those who are completely new to photogrammetry, this is not a limitation of memento, but in general, photogrammetry does not know how to handle transparent or shiny objects. Because what we do is you take photos, photos, photos around an object, and then we compare photo to photo. And we have to find the same pixels in color in the next photo. So if I had a mirrored sexy blouse, you're looking at me and this pixel is blue because your shirt is blue. And then from there it's brown because she's right. wearing a brown and the software will go, oh, oh wait, what's going on? I have no idea what's happening here and it can fail. Right. So that's the only place where it can actually fail. Um, Shiny and, and really most scanning systems have that issue. Laser-based scanning systems have the same issue, the reflectivity surfaces, yeah. and clear objects as well as projected. Um, so they all seem, anytime that you have to use light in order to determine what your object is, so maybe we need to start using sound. But you know, and, yeah. and I'm sure you guys will be learning, you know, you, how, how this pro project you've been working on for maybe a year. So I'm sure in the next year you'll have. Oh no, th this was the labs project done with actually a very small team. And we are so proud. We are exhausted, but uh, <laughs> we're so excited. And uh, the team is getting bigger now because there is so much positive feedback. And what I love and which speaks to the fact that we achieved it. The first thing when people say, I use Memento and oh my, it's so much fun. <laughs> I want to hear that because I don't want software that's smart, but it's frustrating. Well, I'm going to push know. to do an overview. I've got it here. Just show us yeah. the menu no, system. No, no, no. It, I do not. I love to show my software. Okay. Is, uh, so go ahead and bring the chair those. over here, and then we'll put the mic here. You got it. Yeah. Thank you. I wish I... Um, can, I let's see. Go ahead and take a seat right some, here, touch Some data sets, because do you have at least any data I have sets? some, yeah. Any photos, I mean. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't have photos. I yeah, have some because meshes. to show the workflow for photos, oh. um, that would be... Okay, so let me bring it up there. Just capture, fade. So excuse us, audience. We will make a switch here to the software. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'll show whatever is possible without <laughs> data sets. Okay. All right, so um, here, I'll give you the mouse. Yeah, and we have, if you can download at least the first one okay, here. Go ahead. Oh, How about this is a touch screen, sorry. Oh, no, you messed me up. No, I didn't. No, I'm kidding. Um, well, we, but we do need to download it. Okay, one. you want this one? Yeah. Okay. So in the software, we gave um, three sample models. We have much more, but because in two weeks, we're coming out with a beautiful gallery where you can share in 3D. Um, we will post there many models that anybody can download. We wanted to finish the gallery for today, but uh, the team worked really hard and we just needed a little bit more time. A little but bit more sleep. In the meantime, <laughs> if you don't mind going to memento.autodesk.com, we can show the audience also the website. Yeah, I don't know how much bandwidth. Uh, okay, well, we'll Let's see what see. happens. Memento.autodesk.com. Yeah, it's already there. 
You made it last night. At, this morning I tried to show it. We do our um, 3D in review and, and it didn't come up. And the website's beautiful. Yep. Oh, it's you. great. And actually I used I this this image today. The team designed it. We, we really mm -hmm. uh, together designed it. We, we do not have at the moment dedicated resources for design. Everything you see actually is designed by the development team and myself Which, together. Yeah, turned out We're beautiful. very, very proud of that. It turned out really great. <laughs> Okay, so just quickly on the website, if you don't mind to show them where is what. Um, so I'm grabbing the mouse because I'm a control freak. Um, by the way, audience, we have so much reflection because the sun in San Francisco. You, they is, don't see that. Okay, so no, but I don't see anything. So oh, I'm, I okay. probably look like an old yeah. lady trying to. Yeah, is so it better? on the home page, you can run the main video and see what it is. Actually, we have a better uh, updated video that you can. Um, open tomorrow probably on the features page you can um, see what memento is all doing mesh creation from input mesh import diagnostic tools publish and export 3d printing etc in learning i posted at the moment six videos there will be much more coming but just so you let can me, see let me make sure we're actually on the screen i'd hate for you to spend oh. all this time okay we're good yes um, so you can see digitized for 3d printing digitized for fit and test in fusion 360 uh, we worked with a scientist who needed comparison features so because he is diving underwater and capturing corals and he wanted to capture them today and then six months later. His name is Sly Lee and he wanted them to compare and say if a coral is shrinking or growing. So we made a, the, a feature that uh, shows the diff analysis between the two uh, states. Then create uh, for cre um, digitize to create assets for film and game. Um, we have automatic turntables, but also videos in uh, Creation in Memento. It is very easy. You can create a sophisticated video without knowing anything about keyframes and stuff. So really trying to make the full workflow. And now this is wow. the, the button that um, I was talking about, the forum. It leads to the new beta forum link. And the second, uh, the first uh, is the Welcome Memento that I posted this morning. And the second post is actually links to the Memento yeah. webinar recordings where you can see all of that. So going back to the product, um, dum, 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 where is the button? Okay, okay. So when you open Memento, it will look like this if you first time open it. <laughs> uh, my one looks covered with beautiful projects. I'm really annoyed that we cannot show it from my machine because there's so many inspiring things to show you. But how you start, you love an object. You decided to watch my webinar and learn how to take the photos. You took photos all around, now you have the photos. So you say, I want to create a new project from photos. You click here. At this point, you have to be connected to the internet because it will require an internet connection. And now this might sound complicated to those who are new to Autodesk world, but Autodesk allows you, no, it has to be me. Uh, okay. Because maybe we can reach to some of my projects. Let's okay. see, maybe we will be lucky. Uh, Autodesk allows you to create a free Autodesk address at the sign up. So if you don't have any address, you can say need an Autodesk ID. And then um, it doesn't cost anything and it gives you five gigabyte cloud storage. Okay, so I sign in. Once you're signed in, you can make sure that you're signed in by just being here. Okay. And now it asks me, where are my photos? Are, are they on my local drive or on my uh, hard drive? Now, uh, on my um, uh, cloud drive. And I can actually see some of the models already popping up. Uh, and I will say local drive. And now my dear colleague here does not have any photos, so we cannot show you how to. But basically, this will just uh, scroll through your hard drive. Wherever you have the photos, you select them. You click Create Model, and that's it. And then the, mo the, the moment the model is ready, which can be, oh, I clicked it too fast. Uh, yeah. Um, so audience, if we terminate at any point, um, <laughs> you can blame it on touch on it. Yeah, I, I, it's not fair. <laughs> you caught me off guard. If I knew, I would have shown. Oh, uh, no, yeah. You're fine. We're, so we're um, the, moment, the moment your product is ready, it will show, um, it, you will receive an email. It can be that that um, uh, email comes after three hours because depending on the number of photos and the resolution. Awesome. Today, we limit the import to 250 photos, but we already have it in
in the internal engine working with over a thousand photos and we are proud right. that in a couple of weeks time we will have that as well which is really amazing and now this was asked at the lunch yesterday what's the processing time if i have yes 250 photos Upload them, how long does it take before I get them um, out? There are a couple of factors for that, but you can count that it will take three to four hours. Uh, sometimes, if you're lucky, depending also on uh, the servers and the queue, um, it can take uh, less. The yeah. thing is that, and it depends on the resolution. We did have, for those who are our testers in December, we did have some photo upload bug that had nothing to do with the, the problem of the uh, let me see if some of my now, if I project. remember correctly, early on I, I had heard that one of the things that I didn't like about the, the other product that you had out was because it went into the cloud and it took so long to process that you could take advantage of your desktop PC, especially if you had a, you know, a, a real um, what do you call it? Oh. A powerhouse that you'd be able to do it locally, so. Yes, so we do hear that a lot. I'll just select some folder to put the, the horse statue there. Um, we did, um, uh, we do get requirements about uh, full desktop processing. Uh, at the moment, uh, the world knows Agisoft and they're using the desktop processing from yeah, Agisoft. I've used it as well. Um, yes, they're all good tools. Mm -hmm. uh, what Autodesk in general is moving to the cloud because we believe that the cloud with thousands of servers can give you a much better experience. The fact that at the moment it's uh, slower, that is from different reasons. We have to learn how to burst well, etc. But the fact that you can close your machine after uploading and do whatever you want, and it's not busy, that is something that people wanted. They wanted access to their projects at all time, which when they're stored on the cloud and they're processed there. So, but there, majority of the people are happy with the cloud, but there are industries like media entertainment that would prefer to be offline and we will look at local registration because we know that sometimes you're in a field and you want to capture uh, photos and then you want to make sure that you captured everything and it will stitch well. So you just want the draft quick results. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yes, so let me see. Um, I now download it. I hope that, um, where is your video folder? I have no idea what I downloaded. Neither do I. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, this well, is. Well, you, you had a horse. A, hmm. The internet is. Uh, well, the other thing, too, is we're really probably pushing my little tiny pan tech here. We're, yeah, we're because we're driving we, our okay, YouTube. I'm just we're downloading the Garuda mod model. Um, I would really, really welcome everybody to the new webinars and please watch the other ones. It's hard to demonstrate the software where there are no assets because either I have to right. have photos to create them. So once we download the Garuda, we can open it. I just want to make sure we're still one's live. Already, one's already downloaded. Okay. Oh yeah, you can cancel the one. Which one? Cancel Which the left one? one. Okay. So, but just in short, so that we um, don't uh, waste people's time looking how we download. Basically, the process is you upload the photos, you saw how it is, it's really simple. When you upload the photos, they will show little previews and you will have last minute chance to eliminate photos if they're blurry, if a dog passed <laughs> in front of you or somebody. Click the create button. After one hour or three hours, you receive an email uh, saying, uh, or however long, it depends really on the project, I don't wanna promise any number of hours. Um, you receive an email that it's ready and then it will pop up in the left uh, bottom corner you click it asks you to download the mesh and then you open it from then on you have a high quality mesh but very often you have a bunch of the surrounding that you didn't want didn't, didn't need in the scene so we made really simple tools to find the scene clean it up and then we have a mesh detection tool that tells you oh you have spikes and particles and holes and tunnels it filters them out it shows them to you if you want to see where they are and there are a bunch of Photoshop type of really easy tools to then select, clean up, etc. And the main power of Memento comes in the export options. We export to OBJ, OBJ with quads, FBX, FBX with camera positions, so that you can in other software reproject the photos in case you wanted some uh, sharpness, etc. We export to PLY, to point cloud in RCP format, and then also to AVI, and the AVI can be either an automatic turntable or we just say move the model keyframe move the model keyframe move the model keyframe and they can make really sophisticated video without knowing anything about video 
uh, right. making. And that, that was the whole point. And then... So it looks like it's going to take us about 50 minutes. Now, you said you had a video that will describe some of this? Well, yes. In, on the website, okay, all so of this... let's go ahead and cancel this. Yes, and then okay. go out to the video. And we can yes, I think it will be easier. I'm so sorry. I love oh, okay. demonstrating I, my software alive. I know, but, and uh, I really wanted you to. Um, so. Without any asset on the machine, it's really hard. Oh, well, I should have asked. <laughs> sorry about that. We no. can repeat this whenever you want. I can do live. I would love that. But actually, uh, make, I'll give you my card, and we'll get together, and we'll do this again. We'll do an anytime. interview. I have no okay. fear to demonstrate live the awesome. software because we're actually proud right. of it. Yeah. So yeah. let's so, let's get quickly some visuals. Okay. So and This is at memento.autodesk.com. You can just click up on the... Yeah, and some of the UI elements a little bit changed because for the beta we beautified a little bit. These are 70 photos that I did um, from a horse at a friend's of mine house um, with a Canon 100S camera. So it was not even, and this was my very first reconstruction, and I was so proud. I'm a Canon S95. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you, you see the UI is slightly different, but the process is the same. You see the photos in the new UI, you can also delete them and stuff. And when you get the email that it's done, um, you get this. Now that the scene is dirty, the first thing is you set the coordinate system just because photo doesn't know what is up and what is down. Now we want to fix it. So first I can select either with a lasso tool like in Photoshop or with rectangular uh, tool. And then I want to say, hey, I'm only interested actually in this part of the mesh, delete the rest. We're talking here about um, probably half a million polygon mesh. And it's working like this. This is not sped up yep, or something. I noticed something. that yesterday. That, you did see a live demo yesterday. I hope you can well, tell no, the I audience actually, that. I was uh, using this last night. And I, yeah. One of the things that I do is I capture 3D. I have a sensor I was going to show you later on. So I brought in my stuff to see how the tools performed, and I was impressed. Yeah. So the tool that you just saw is an automatic slice tool that also caps because almost every photogrammetry model will be empty underneath. Yeah. And let's so say I want to 3D print this horse, and I'm somebody who doesn't know much about printing. I want to clean up this stick here from the stand, but it was difficult because it was capturing the surroundings. So we made this isolate feature Beautiful. that makes it very easy then to just clean up that part. Yeah. Now I bring back the isolated model. Let's say I'm foolish. I don't know this can not be printed because it has a hole, but I say I want to 3D print and the software. This is a little bit sped up for the video here, yeah, but it finds bit. all it, the. It didn't go that fast for yeah, me yesterday. No. <laughs> and of course, for videos, you don't want people to stare in a video how the <laughs> clock works, but right. I love showing it live because it's actually phenomenally fast for what it does. Um, so now it found holes, and I can either go one by one and fix them manually or can ask the software to mix, fix them automatically. Now it fixed it, but it made this sharp edge. I don't like that. So we have another tool that smoothens the edge and I can change the push or pull and the size of brush and then make it really smooth. And we will add much more of this. Remember, this is developed in a very short time and it's beta, a lot of goodies are coming. So let's say I made this. Currently I use Mesh Mixer to do a lot of this. Yes, so. but Mesh Mixer cannot open any of the models that we can make because they're too big. Oh, and we learn a lot from Mesh Mixer. We're the same company, same team. Ryan, who, who made Mesh Mixer, is an yes. amazingly smart person and he's helping us a lot, but we have to recode it for big mesh because for this level of quality, it's that. So we fix now the holes. I click on the 3D print environment. Now it says, now you can print. And now here, I can see the size. I can either auto fit. Uh, at the moment, it loaded the Stratasys uh, printer. I can uh, change to MakerBot. It gives another envelope because the MakerBot is smaller. And once I have decided which direction, which size, I say apply, and I can save it as STL for that particular printer. So I know it's prepared for that printer and I can just go with the USB yeah, stick and print it. This is too cool. Okay, so that's just one thing. Um, we can maybe move to another, what am I showing more here? Let's see, I don't remember the videos that I made. Yeah, <laughs> this is the printout and I was so proud because well, it what I like to do, really I've got some simple meshes. I want you to take the tool in mm -hmm. real time and, sure. and one of them's my face. So if you can tolerate my face. <laughs> um, yeah. And um, one thing for the listeners, we decided to um, to make to develop this software in something that I call swim, snorkel and dive, meaning if there are users who don't know much and they just want the software to help them fix automatically problems, they will be swimming. And um, 
if uh, oh many of my beautiful mesh is loaded actually so uh, I oh, can show they? yes so we just need to download some well that's a problem uh, that is, is the problem mm -hmm. here sorry about that yeah that's okay okay um, and by the way um, the the editing tool set many things are still at the, not still they're at the beginning um, but um, they're already very very strong Hmm. Uh, for example, for this beta release, we wanted to finish shelling feature that was going to make your zero thickness surface thick so you can print it. Because if you didn't capture an object from all sides, just the surface, then it's a zero thickness surface. I cannot do anything no with water it. Tape. Not for, for the 3D printing. Um, Let's see, I'm going to bring in some of the models that I have. Are you familiar with the occipital structure sensor? Yes. So I've worked with this Connect software. Are you familiar with that? No. Okay. It's, it was a company out of France and Spain um, that Occipital bought, and it's for desktop. And it's made specifically for the Connect um, mm -hmm. scanners. But obviously, as you're probably aware of, the structure sensor is also a Connect variant. So I've been working with them. So I've got a lot of test files here. Since you also bring in PLI. If it's a mesh, we do bring PLI. Yeah, if and actually, I did this Somebody last in the night, forum so. this morning, I cannot put the PLY, what's happening? And we said, well, uh, if it's a point cloud PLY, because PLY can be point cloud or mesh, uh, we probably are confusing users by saying PLY. And I just asked the development team this morning to put in brackets PLY mesh, because it, um, we did not specify that. We will eventually import PLY clouds as well. It's just not happening at the moment. Um, I demonstrated in two, on two conferences our laser scan to mesh, which uh, it's not yet exposed, but um, we have a beautiful reconstruction of laser scans in a. So this particular mesh. model, I think, has about 2.5 million mm -hmm. faces. Does it normally take this long to import? I don't know because you're online with so many tools here. I don't know. Mm. There we oh, go. That's pretty fast though. For... Oh, there you go. Gorgeous. Oh, Whoa. that's Cody. Cody. It's one of uh, the people we work with. Yeah. Wow, it imported it right up. Yeah. So do your yeah. magic on it. Yeah, well, there is only so much magic you can do. This is not a very complete scan. So there will be a lot, uh, well, well, a lot of stuff needed. Let's go ahead and crop some of it. Yeah. So for the crop, I can show you. First of all, I would probably just uh, say I would like to orient the model in a way that I can feel comfortable working okay. in it. And I'm doing it from, I usually prefer this method where I can see what am I doing. Mm -hmm. And then um, this would be the current view. And I'll just say use current view. Oh, that's nice. So that's more like your home position. Correct? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't do this right, when you go to turntable, when you go to export, it's all upside down. And mm -hmm. then you wonder why is your turntable doing uh, <laughs> some of that. So the first thing, just for the audience, if you right click and click here, you can see the mesh. And um, this was done from laser, right? Oh, uh, no, structured sensor. Oh, it is structured yeah. sensors. I have a lens system that I've made for it. so. You're actually getting better quality than you normally would. Yeah. But you also get a little more noise. So one of the tools that I use in 3D Coat as well as Mesh Mixer is the smoothing tool. Exactly. So. Yeah, so how I would address this, this is lacking a lot of data. So it will be, oops, I'm not used to your mouse. I would probably just first eliminate all of this stuff here. Click the del either. delete button. Yep. So that's what I would do as well. Yeah. And then, yeah, we have a, yeah, we have lots of stuff here. Yeah. So, so how do we remove that? I think I saw last night yeah. there's a tool. So either you just go like this, or I use often the isolation tool okay. uh, to delete the stuff. That's so, what I used last night. And I yeah. thought it was. Pretty I think important. the isolate is really, really powerful because you will have so many situations in which you select something and you select thousands of other things, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, if we have time now, I would really work like this. I would do this. I would isolate it. And then just you see how much easier it is then to uh, go here. Okay, so do you not have an automatic tool that allows, let's say, extraneous, let's say, let's 
think of it from a percentage standpoint. These like will five, be all particles. If I click now and said find, find all the problems, oops, what did I do? Um, it will find them as particles, yep. but because you have so many, it Excellent. will be just useless to ask the software to kill itself from calculating particles that you can actually just uh, uh, remove like that. So, but that would be the strategy for that. And then um, I would like to show you, but we have to clean it up a little bit for that. So probably I cannot escape by cleaning it up now. Uh, the slice tool obviously will not uh, be able to create a base because um, you're missing too much data, but there are tricks how to do that. So I would love to show you that. Oh God, I'm not used to your mouse. <laughs> Throwing curveballs at you. Well, we could hook up yours. Oh, sure. Well, I'll get it. I'll get it. It's, it's okay. It just takes time. These things are not one click stuff. I don't know how interesting it is for the audience to, <laughs> to watch stuff like that. So let me see if I can show the strategy because that's important. With the tools that we have, we will have much better tools. But oh, maybe I can start with this. First, let's say you have this open area here and you want to close this area. Oops. You want to close this area. We have a bridge tool. That was actually available before, but it was hidden under the, the whole tool and nobody could figure mm -hmm. it out. And what that tool does is it allows me, I have to switch to mesh mode. It allows me to select a triangle. I have to switch to the face mode or mm -hmm. it will also work with uh, the brush selection. And another triangle from the opposite side. I'm not very familiar with this mesh, so I'm just eyeballing here. Yeah. And then you select bridge. The bridge should follow the curvature and create a connection mesh, which then, if you select with the brush tool all around, can close the hole. Now, this might not work here. No, it's but a little I bit mean, too if dirty. You work with it more and more. And yes. Uh, th the problem is this data set needs a little bit cleaning before mm -hmm. I start closing the gaps and it will just simply. Yeah, I just thought I'd throw the worst at you. Oh, no. And I'm not scared. It's just I don't know how yeah, these sessions are interesting for users to follow. But th that would be the strategy when you have something like that. So if we go in the, um, uh, in the slice, why is your middle button? Not yeah. If we go into the slice tool and um, cut, it will not create the, um, the base because on the one side it's empty. However, it doesn't matter. It can, let's do it up to here so it cleans up a little bit no, for us. That, that's a quick tool to do. Yeah. That's probably what I would do because yes. I wouldn't need the rest And by of the way, these balls, if, uh, if they were confusing, what they do is three points oh, define so a plane. So I actually can move those balls to make a cut the way I want and where I want it. Cool. So that was kind of the idea be behind those. And now I can, sorry, I will chop off the head of your person, <laughs> but Cody doesn't mind. Yeah. I would say slice. So and that's, that's like, why we made those because you can, uh, if you set the coordinate system at the beginning, right, that that will be parallel to the plane and it's fine. But if you want it to slice under an angle or if it was not perfect, then you use those three blue balls to define a plane and then it cuts through. Um, I think that would be the, the smartest strategy at the moment. Let's just see um, to cut that. Cutting and the then this probably will be still, this corner here will be still open. Okay, so let's see. Okay, but I should be able to yeah. select those and delete them, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So here now, um, And by the way, there is one tool that people usually uh, do not find, and I will show you what that one does. Um, You're familiar with NetFab as well, right? Yes. Okay. That's a very good uh, yeah, that's set. That's what I use on a regular basis. Yeah, as well. that is a very, very good set. Uh, this is a really, with photogrammetry, we never, never get stuff like this with our tool. This is just so dirty that I'm not quite sure I understand why is this data set so dirty because. We never get stuff like this. This requires much more cleaning. If this was a little bit cleaner um, hole, just for the audience, you select the brush tool 
and uh, you can make it uh, smaller or bigger using the bracket and then you just select all around you select all around and it fixes the hole or with the bridge tool that i showed you you select one triangle here one triangle here it creates a bridge then you fix that hole etc that's the strategy i must say this data set is scarily uh dirty i don't know why i don't know what was the input um but this would be my strategy and uh, from now on here uh we we will have smarter tools for um uh making these bridges but the bridge tool usually works um let me just try if i can do it now what i was showing you so you have to be in the face tool This normally should work, and uh, if it doesn't, it's because I'm not selecting faces in the right place because I do not know this data set well. It's not doing it, I'm not quite sure why. Nonetheless, it's really powerful working yep. with a lot of polygons, and it's pretty fast mm -hmm. being on a little laptop. Let's see, let's try it here because I'm now really quite confused. Why is this? Okay. I'm selecting one triangle here, one triangle here. So Shauna's telling us we have five minutes. Okay. Which build do you have? The one that we posted yesterday? Last night, I downloaded it at midnight. Okay, because this is not normal. Let me just see. Okay, well, it's not working on this data set and I do not have an answer why. My developers will be very happy to see this. <laughs> oh, yeah. You you see, the point is, you cannot work fast with software. You have to have the time to, to know what you're selecting. This is the strategy for any complicated shapes, any simple uh, holes. Any simple holes, you can just, with the brush tool, zoom around and make and do it. So when you have a dirty data set like this, my approach would be with bridges. The bridges, if you select flat, will make a flat connection if you select it smooth it will make a smooth following the curvature of both triangles and trying to find approximately what could have been lost wow. there that you didn't have yeah you should get a chance to talk to a occipital and actually nick in particular he has some very good uh these are probably watertight uh, algorithms that he uses that are very quick and work with lots of polygons yeah. and i must say normally and I don't this is a to, very to yeah. um um criticize your data but garbage in garbage out this data has more holes than data it's a little bit unfair to try to show you here you need more modeling than actually fixing mm -hmm. the tools that we have today are to fix well done data but uh, something that a mathematical algorithm cannot uh, do perfectly um, what you're having here you're you're missing so much data that there there is more yeah, need of modeling tools we will arrive there, it's just not possible. Well, these are test samples. Yeah, As and it's notice, okay, I'm not, I'm not angry or anything. No. I'm, I just uh, feel bad that I cannot show much of the stuff, but if you can see here, you know, more than half of the head is missing, the, the lower body was missing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I learned a ton. Yeah, I can't wait and, to my hands yeah. This. and very quickly here, um, this is the decimate feature that is also available in the export. What these are, are retriangulation and subdivision, if you, uh, select something and you need to subdivide it because uh, you want to work more on it so you can select um, and then you just go um, oops. and you either go subdivide or and then it changes the geometry uh, very quickly this is our mesh analytics tool I will not click it because it has so many holes that it will say are you nuts um, <laughs> you should have a message that comes up You're yeah nuts this is 1.3 million polygons mm -hmm. mesh. You see, it's uh, really fast. And this is the 3D print feature that, of course, it will fail because this doesn't work. Yep. The expert options are the ones that are very, that are the core power of Memento, which is J, OBJ with quotes, FBX, STL. And if you select any of the, of the mesh exports, 
you have a possibility now you don't have that because you don't have texture but you can rebake texture preserve texture and then yeah, you that's can, a wonderful feature that i really you can want to bake use. in the diffuse color map displacement map and normal map so that if you have a beautiful model and it's two million polygons or two billion polygons and you want it on vr ar you can decimate it with the baking and uh they can have it as a 300 polygons but still looking good wow. um no we're not even going to get out of this well, Shauna's over there telling me we need to yeah. finish. So we're well, thank you so much. Yep. No problem. I, I'm sorry that I could no, not show No, you again. showed us a uh, lot. Oh, yeah. And again, if I had been yeah. and I'm, talked yeah, to you earlier. It's, um, yeah, this data set in particular, I'm, um, it did uh, lose, it, it had a lot of data that was missing to make some final artifact, but uh, those would be the, pro the approaches with the current tool set. We, miss a lot of tools we'll be building them no and you have a you showed us some great tutorials out there yes and, uh, we'll have to have give us a again. chance yes and please. do not compare us with tools that are 10 years out there we will get we'll get them no uh, no but you we already have some advances the baking feature unless you want to spend lots of money at this price and that's yes. another point why don't we talk about that if you can yes right now it's free under beta yeah and i know at the lunch somebody brought that up what's it going to cost okay million dollar question um, I hope it's not a million. No. As you know, the the whole reason why Autodesk is moving to the cloud is that um, it enables us to offer different business models with the customers. So until now, we were selling perpetual licenses. You buy it, then you have to upgrade it and stuff. But with the cloud now, we can charge by use. Maybe the product will be free and we only charge when you export the high quality mesh. We don't yet know what the business model is, and we intend to keep this free for probably the entire year because we want to learn how artists, how entrepreneurs, how scientists, how museums would like to pay for this. One big part of this product is what we did for the Smithsonian as a prototype, that this is the editor where you prepare the assets, and then there will be the online platform where you can, in non-linear way, tell a story or present these assets with, in combination with CAD models and in combination with um, PDFs and text and audio and video, et cetera, because the whole point is to be able to teach with that, to sell with that, to whatever you do. Mm -hmm. um, that one is full cloud portion of Memento, which again, gives us other opportunities. So at the moment, we don't have the answer. It sure. will definitely not be a high price uh, That's uh, what I wanted to hear. It definitely will not be a perpetual license. Uh, it will be something that will be based, subscription based. Uh, we want based. to take the responsibility with the success of the users. If you're successful, we can take a portion of that. If you're not successful, we don't take anything. I would like to look at the model like that. Awesome. Excellent. Thank so well, thank you very being. much. Yeah. Yeah. Please watch fun. the webinars. And we will. And awesome. uh, we'll tell our audience. Tatiana, thanks for being with us. Thank we you. We'll see you back on the show floor of Real 2015 on All Things 3D. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank uh -huh. you for, for the honor to be.